93.5 Fox Sports Radio. Tim Terry with you. Glad to have you aboard. And my good friend Keith Holt, Mike side with us. Game two of this doubleheader, in which one in which the Bulldogs really in a must win situation. And I say that obviously with air quotes. The postseason certainly still in grasp, and that's obviously what the goal is. But man, you want to get that one seed and stay atop, and just for bragging rights and nothing else, just and maybe an easier road once you get to the postseason. You don't need to get swept by the number five team in the conference. Uh, I know you're on the road. Uh, that first game got off to a bad taste in our mouths. Five straight calls went against Greenwood that were all really bad calls, to be quite honest with you. Now, and like you said, Keith, you made a great point. Greenwood had five hits in that game, and a couple of them came in the seventh inning rally against the relief pitcher. So uh, Pettigrew, the lone bright spot there, was two for two in the game. Skaggs had a hit. Cole had a hit. Mitchell had a hit. So, uh, you just got to come out and hit the baseball. You make your own luck. And, you know, if the momentum's not going your way, it's up to you to change it. You, you can't gripe about it or feel sorry for yourself. You just you got to change it. And, you know, we, we let the momentum be snuffed from us in the first two innings, and we never fought to get it back. And, you know, it wasn't competitive at the plate. And I'm talking about as a whole, not not one or two people. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the team as a whole because the team as a whole, you know, Petty, Petty had hits, but if people's not on base, then it doesn't score runs. You don't get RBIs. And if he gets on base and nobody hits him in, then, you know, it's hard to score. And that's why the team, it, it's it's got to be a team game. And, uh, you know, Mountain Home did the little things. But the big thing is, is you got a team that's not confident and you give them a little bit, it's a dangerous thing. And to me, this is – Air quotes or not, this is must win. This is, you know, you are you are supposed to be the big dog in the conference. And right now you're still tied for first place at this point. Um, you lose that if you lose. And to me, your champions, this is how you prepare. You got on the road. You treat it like it's a, a state tournament game. And you come out with a little fire this game. And you make your own luck. You're going to see Mason Moore on the mound, who's been spectacular in high school games. And we have no idea what kind of strike zone we're going to get. And that goes both ways. Um, you know, this pitcher, the Mountain Home got beat by Russellville 10 to nothing in the first game with the same pitcher that threw against us. And then the second game, Russellville only won 2 to nothing. So this pitcher is going to compete. And, uh, you know, Greenwood's just got to compete harder. We're going to see a lefty here. That's Drew Haney, their pitcher, on the bump. It'll be Jackson DeMint over at first base who's in there in replacing their uh, first baseman, uh, Nate Henderson, I believe, who was injured in the first game. So the Bulldogs will get their shot at a lefty. Last time I can recall the lefty starting against this was that Russellville loss in game two you talked about. So we'll see what this guy's got up his sleeve. And, And for context, the Russellville pitcher hasn't lost a game yet, and he threw two back to back no hitters. That's how well he's done since he played us. So, it, you know, we didn't know who he was. Now the entire state knows who he is, and all the colleges are waiting until August 1st to be able to talk to him and recruit him. He is a sophomore. Partly cloudy and 75 degrees here for game number two. What wind there is is blowing about 11 miles an hour, really out of the south. And so that is out to left field here as the – uh, Pittsfield faces Northeast here at uh, McLean Park in Mountain Home. It will be Braden Skaggs to start things off for the Bulldogs here. He is in left field again here in game number two. And Drew Haney, the lefty up on top. First pitch is high and outside, ball First one. Pitch, hmm. 6.42 is the first pitch time. I've never been this anxious to see a strike zone before. That one's in there for a called strike. Skaggs, the senior, leading off. Here it comes, upstairs, 2-1. and one. Looks like you're going to see steady fastball curve ball. A little bit more velocity we saw last game. And the lefty brings in there Skaggs. It's a bat on it, fouls it out of play over the Bulldogs' dugout first base side. Bombers and all whites here in game number two. Same beauties. 
let's see here. Haney brings the 2-2. Upstairs, Skag swinging a miss. Chased one out of the strike zone. Gonna get you a number of that catcher. Well, I know this catcher for the Bulldogs is Ty Holt coming in. And the right-handed batting freshman looked at ball one high and away. He's just not finishing that pitch. He's, he's where the ball is finishing is close to a strike, but he's got to get that ball more over the plate. And this one's in the air <coughs> to center. Will it get to the Bermuda Triangle? Center fielder flying in, makes the catch for out number two. Here's Grant Carnes now, the third baseman for the Bulldogs. Jackson Westcote is their battery mate back there. Carnes first pitch swinging the two out single into left field. Right through the 5 6 hole. And the Bulldogs a little earlier with the base hit. Let's see if Pettigrew can stay hot. He was two for two in the first game with a walk. Now batting the first baseman, number 99, Brady Pettigrew. Pettigrew. Top of the first will be the last chance for the Bulldogs here. Right-handed bat, Haney up on top. A left-handed hurler for the Bombers. Greenwood, and they're all grays on the road here. Artificial surface in the infield. They throw over, and Carnes already back over there before the ball left his hand. The lights are on. Have been since the outset of game one. 75 degrees at the first pitch, 642 uh, here in game two. I think I mentioned 645 was the start time. So if you're getting in late, I apologize. I forgot it's a fake infield. Didn't have to rake it or anything. No, I don't have to rake it, set lines, redo anything. Yeah. It's all good to go. Other than the mound. The mound is dirt. The outfield is natural surface. But uh, as the West Coast goes out, the talk to Haney. Real surface. And right back (laughs) to talk again. They didn't get something lined out, but real surface just makes you be fundamentally sound on grounders, and you can get away with not being fundamental on turf, and all you got to basically do is be athletic enough to count the hops yep. and then field it and throw it, and it just makes it to where it's more, and I know everybody loves turf, and it lets you play, but it just it takes away a lot of the fundamentals of the game. Lady Bulldogs won 3 nothing. Howard got the win, a complete game, had a dinger as well, as did Daisy Parker, so both of them. Helping the cause with home runs over there for the ladies. They're in game two as well. That's in there for a called strike to Pettigrew. I don't know what I've done here, but I've moved into the second inning for some reason. They throw over and Carnes is back safely. (laughs) My score sheet. What are you doing? I don't know. I just... (sighs) Two outs and a one count. To Brady Pettigrew. That's a ball. Towards the plate and just missed. <laughs> one and one now. Let's see if Pettigrew can square one up. Oh, called strike. Whew, one and two. <laughs> it's kind of tricky, the Bomber fan sitting on the visiting team side that's outside yeah i don't know where they're going that was in the on the white of that opposite batter's box yes never seen an umpire with the elbow guards it's very rare that a ball comes from behind you and hits you Whew. deuce is wild too Pettigrew. <laughs> he swings and misses it one low and away well the bulldogs had a two out single from carnes but to no avail as the bombers get the strikeout and one hit, one left on base, no runs. Bombers come to bat in the bottom of the first. Quick break here on the Sports Hog 103.5. Minute.
Okay. We welcome you back to Pittsfield here at McLean Park in Mountain Home. This is Mason Moore, the left-handed junior for the Bulldogs. Getting the start in game number two. Mason comes in 6-0 and oh on the season, Keith. His ERA, 1.91. So he's been fantastic <clears throat> in his conference outings. And two of your, your starters in game one and two are underclassmen. I mean, you're losing your senior closer that comes in with Mitchell, but you, you saw Aaron Taylor come in as a freshman and, and do a pretty good job of just throwing strikes and getting outs. Um, Mason's done he, – he's gotten stronger every game. Well, here is the righty's first pitch to Jet Hannaford in there for a called strike. And Mountain Home is not comfortable with how quickly the – the Greenwood pitchers work. They take their time getting in and out. Reminds me of LSU, which is mm -hmm. at the bottom of the SEC, by the way, because they do that. That's not who you want to be reminded of. Good strike. Boom. Yep, called strike. The batter tried to get out, and Moore did a good job of just grooving one yeah. as he walked out of the plate, out of the box. Now, you can ask for time all day, but if home plate blue doesn't grant it, then you don't get it in the 0-2 now to Hannaford. Moore brings it home. Yeah, he did. No, he don't think he did, Keith. Check swing. Yep. They call him out. Wow. You knew they were going to call that. Yeah, I guess. We'll we'll take it. <laughs> he tossed him, too. He argued, and he turned around and got tossed. Well, we've seen the quick trigger to the Greenwood player in game one. And Hannaford didn't like it, and home plate blue just tossed Jet Hannaford. And now Coach um, Crow is going to come down. Yeah, Coach Crow allowed it to happen the first time he stepped out and say something, and I mean, the rule of thumb in baseball is you let the managers talk to the umpires. True. You don't let the kids. And he, he let him get away with it the first time, so he thought it was okay to turn around and say, I didn't go. Greg Crow at the third base coach, the head coach, Kyle Stevens, over at first base. And, and to me, what's done is done. You can't reverse it. No. I mean, otherwise you could go back and look at the Zitzman call and say, look, we mm -hmm. tossed him, but sorry, we were didn't wrong. Let him to. back in. Right. Didn't mean to. No. <clears throat> Coach Crow's only uh, job now is not to get tossed himself. That's the only thing that can come from this meeting. He did not, so here's Dawson Dunlap now with one down. I'm sure Coach Crow's and the home plate blues turned back around. He, he's wanting more. Who's that? One is in for two, he said. So Brady Lance. Moore fired up, too, and you don't want to give Greenwood. Greenwood's a sleeping giant right now. You know they're better than what they played the first game. You don't want to give them any motivation or anything to get started. Now well, Mason's feeling it. Yep, called strike. The Dunlap. Moore up on top, brings home the 0-1. Fastball right back up the box. Can Morgan get there? He can't. <coughs> just got through. Nice piece of hitting there. As Dunlap just brought it right back where it came from. Yep. Look, nothing anybody could do with that ball. And here's it was just a CNI and i single. It was one of those that just bounces through that's perfectly placed right between Morgan and Cole. And if you can keep getting them and that's the hardest ball you hit, you've done a good job. Here's Jackson Corp. He's their left fielder. Dunlap gets a lead over at first. A one-out single for the Bombers. And they throw over nearly got him. Dunlap at the dive back in. Corp's a right-handed bat. Moore up on top. Mason checks the runner over that right shoulder. The runner fakes like he's going. Holt got away from him. I think Ty may have took his eye off, thought he was going. It just slipped through the glove, and then now we have a base advance. Mm. Mm. I didn't see it, so Ty had that. Oh, yeah. It was, he would have had to kind of backhand it. It was kind of low on outside. But I thought the runner was taking off, too, and I think he might have caught him peeking. He just didn't squeeze. One ball, one strike. And that's over but low. 
think that counts right. Two and zero is what I have, but I miss, may have missed a strike. We'll see. Moore checks the runner at second now with one out, and here it comes. Good job of Holt that time to get out there and block it. It's three and zero. Yeah. Moore looks at the scoreboard, and he's getting home plate blue. Gave him the three zero look. So checks on the runner. And that's in there for a called strike. Three and one. One down here in the bottom of the first. And more up on top. Kicks and fires. There's a base hit in the shallow center. Mitchell up with it. They're going to bring the runner home. Don't cut it, Petty. Oh. I did. That's, Holt's got to be hard to let that thing through. It's an RBI. Yeah, no, he doesn't say he have to say anything, and then it let, you let it go. You don't say let it go. If he hears anything from Ty, then he cuts it. Yep. I mean that. And it's an no, RBI no, single no, for McLean. petty has got to know that's the only way that you can get him is to not cut it, let it go. That would have been close. I'd like to see that play. Yep. I agree. Well, here is number five, Lincoln Sherry. And the first one's low for ball one. One nothing. Bombers have scratched one across here in the bottom of the first with two outs. A one out single came across the score in Dunlap. Dawson Dunlap. Here it is. There's a shot to left. And Skaggs going to get it on a hop. No, he misplayed it. And that's going to go to the wall. One run's going to score for sure. They're going to round and score first to, from first. Ball comes in, and it is to third base for Lincoln Sherry. Single with a two-base error? I agree. <laughs> and probably give him one RBI. So the two-base error. <laughs> and a man on third, and three runs now in for Mountain Home. Here's Drew Haney. He's their pitcher. First pitch swing, and this one's in the air. Will it stay in play? No room for Pettigrew. Over at first base, strike one. Well, we talked about Mountain Home hadn't scored a run in 26 innings of conference play. Put seven on us in game one, and already three here in the bottom of the first. Mm. They certainly found something they sure like against these Bulldogs. Left-handed bat, Drew Haney, their pitcher, in the seven hole, and that one's a ball, so one and one now. That's the equivalent. You got a, you got a champion against the ropes in boxing. You don't let up and let them start punching. You just keep punching. Upper Pettigrew waits on it. Run a race to the bag. Nice job. He raced in there and got him. Dove in. Got the glove on the bag. Really athletic play from Brady Pettigrew. Fantastic work. But the damage was done here by the Bombers. They left a man on base. But they got three runs across on one, two, three hits. There was one error. Bulldogs dug themselves a little hole here. They trail 3 nothing after one inning of baseball. We will take a break and come back and get you ready for the second inning on the Sports Hog 103.5. Um, a minute.
We are back here at Pittsfield Mountain Home, Arkansas. Bulldogs baseball. And Greenwood in a hole here right out of the gate, trailing 3 nothing. It'll be Jackson Cole, Austin Mitchell, Scott Holland here in the top of the second. Cole swings and misses at the left-handed pitcher's first offering. Drew Haney, strike one. And now you may see Coach go a little small ball, try to get a run a game, you know, do little things. When the team doesn't hit, that's how you get things started. Strike two. Jackson, watch that one go through. Haney up on top. West Coast set up way outside, and that's where it went. One ball, two strike to the Greenwood second baseman, Jackson Cole. It was one for three in the first game, scored a run. And one of the five hits. Breaking balls lifted into left hit. center. Hits down. Good job from Jackson Cole. Lead off man aboard. That's what the doctor ordered. And here's Austin Mitchell. Mitchie had a hit also in game one. Greenwood's got to get going. Got to get feeling it. A little pump, hop in their step. They need to start acting like they're one of the top front runners. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, we, we get kind of defensive. Like we don't act like we're the best team. Right. Here's Mitchell. Cole over at first. They come home with it. First pitch swing is fouled straight back. Well, on a personal note, besides my daughter's birthday today, good to see your oldest boy starting the center field and lead off tonight, Keith, with the Arkansas Razorbacks. Thank you. Exciting. <clears throat> be fun to watch. He sure earned it. Here's the old one now to Austin Mitchell. That's it. And it's there's a bot call. Yep. Go. Go. I don't know if that was an umpire calling that or not. Mm, I don't guess it was an umpire, but I don't disagree. No. He went right through this, the the pause. One and one. They throw over. Cole it's not back a good in. move. Yeah, it's not a good move. Leg kick means pick, and otherwise he's slide stepping. One thing is you got to be careful if you're a fan hollering balk, even if you see it, because that might lead the runner to take off. That ball's in the dirt, but not enough for Cole to get loose. The fake dirt, if you will. Two balls and one strike to Austin Mitchell. Boy, I like to get stringy, get some hits together here. Keith, get something going. Bombers pitcher shirt untucked. He'll take a second to tuck it in. Three nothing Mountain Home. We're in the top of the second here. Game two of this doubleheader. Bulldogs were alone at the top in the 5A West, and now with their second loss, probably have joined Russellville and Greenbrier up at the top. Have to see if we can find some scores from around the league. Swing and a miss from Mitchell, two and two. Right-handed bat, left-handed pitching Drew Haney for Mountain Home. Cole at first with a leadoff single here in the top of the second. Sun shining through as it sets off behind us. Right fielder struggles with the sun. That one's in the dirt. Cole nearly had a look at it, but checked up wisely as Westcote did a good job of bouncing on that thing. And it's full count now to Mitchell. Still no outs here, top of the second. Clouds are dwindling a bit. Lots of blue sky now. Getting down a little chilly as the sun sets. There's one off the pull cued off the tip of the bat over to the Greenwood dugout. First base side. They'll do it again. Full count. Cole gets his lead at first base. They set some defensive positioning. The center fielder moved over from right center back to center field. That's outside to Mitchell, and he walked him. The Bulldogs got a little something brewing here in the top of the second with some trap. What now? Did they call that a strike? I guess they called a balk. Oh, it was uh, yeah, it was, it was a balk. So it doesn't get the ball forward, just the no, base runner moves. Yep. Okay. So. If, you, if it's a live ball balk, you can swing at it. And someone had told me that you can't do that in high school, but I, th- I thought it was all live balls. Hmm. <clears throat> well, this is not going to work out well. Well, he did. The center fielder went out at first. That ball's going to drop. So it worked out well. Then he fumbled it a bit, and Mitch is going to get on now with a base hit. So I'll scratch that walk. Cole moves to third now, so the balk does pay dividends for the Bulldogs. Instead of first and second with no outs, Mitchell gets a hit instead of a walk, and we've got first and third with no outs. We'll take it. Two hits for the Bulldogs here. And this is Scotty Holland, the DH here in game number two. And Haney, the lefty, up on top. See if Holland can go get him. RBI chance here. 
First pitch swing, and it's in the gap into left center and down for a base hit and RBI around second. Mitchell going to try for third. He's in there. Save under the tag. Holland will move up and a single RBI for Scotty Holland. Oh, baby. Good, good aggressive base runner by Mitchell. The play's in front of you, and you know if you think you can make it, and even though it was barely, he guessed right. So the Bulldogs get one across, still no outs, and here's Austin Bercher, the Bulldogs' right fielder, with second and third now. And let's see if Bercher can keep things going. He shows Bunt a lot here. Let's see if he kind of shows him, deeks him, get him moving a bit. Bunt for a hit in this situation. But the ball in the dirt, Westcoat blocks it. You know, at the one. major league level, they said you're seeing a lot more slashes where you show Bunt and then hit just because – They've been told to get the out. So if you show bunt, you're going to get something over the middle to, so they can let you bunt it and get the out, and then people are getting balls they can hammer. One ball count to Austin Bircher. Right-handed bat, and Haney up on top, takes a breath, kicks and fires. That's in the dirt ball, too. And I doubt they put that much thought into it at this level. Right. Well, they say thanks to Jason Hill, Phil Hicks, for cooking burgers this past weekend out at the Greenwood Baseball Golf Tournament fundraiser. Sure appreciate the guys at Shelter Insurance. Here's the 2-0. Swing and a miss. That was the ball. 3-2, but I like Bircher's attitude. He says, he's going to come with a strike. I'm going dead red. 2-1 and one now to Bircher. Appreciate everybody came out and supported the golf, the baseball team. Nice little fundraiser for the boys. All the whole sponsors. Here's the 2-1. That's a chopper to short. On a Sunday hop, he'll throw across the diamond, get Bircher, but Mitchie will come in and score from third. The Bulldogs have two across now. An RBI. 6-3 on the put out. Mountain Home Coach is going to go talk to him. But this is this is you that Greenwood answered. You know, you you have one of your worst games you've played all year. If yep. not, I, I can't remember a game that's been worse for us. The second game against Russell, though, we didn't hit very well. <clears throat> but it, it didn't have the feeling that that had. I agree. That, with their you. pitcher did really well, and, and he's done okay. well. It didn't. This isn't the case here. Right. Russellville beat that first pitcher ten to nothing, and yes. we should be able to equal that. We just didn't play well. Nothing went our way no. well. You know, Carnes didn't pitch his best game. It was probably his worst game that he's pitched. It's just nobody did well. Right. Um, Pettigrew hit the ball, and then of course uh, Cole. But I mean, that was it. And yep. so to go from that to now, you can answer. That's huge. You know, you can't. You can't make it a whole bad day. You just make it that bad <laughs> right. game and then change it. So, here comes Brady Morgan. Batting in the nine hole for the Bulldogs with one out. Runners at second base. That's Scotty Holland. 3-2 now, top of the second. Haney brings it home. Oh, right down the middle. And Brady would like to have that one back. He's a sophomore. Short stop for the Bulldogs. Three to two. Greenwood's cut into this lead here in the top of the second. And they th- turn and no throws. No one was really covering. Holland got back to the base uh, before their shortstop. Chaffin. Morgan never left the batter's box. Still waits on the 0-1. That's in the dirt. Good job of holding up. Catcher's done a pretty good job of bouncing on that same pitch. We've seen that probably six times now, and he's just kind of slid over there and scooped at it, glove side. I thought a tough play, but it, eventually you you miss that par putt when you try to get up and down every time. He scooped it every time. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That's outside. 2-1. and one. Congrats to uh, Jeremy Hart and uh, that other guy for winning the baseball golf tournament on Saturday. Very nice. With nine under. Is that you? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Here's the 2-1. That ball's in the air to center. Holland back to tag. The catch is made. He'll deke the tag, and the throw comes in. And Morgan with a nice piece of hitting this. Hit it right where they were on top of the order now for Braden Skaggs, who struck out his first time up. Holland's still out at second, but he's an RBI opportunity for Skaggs here. Skaggs, senior left fielder, will stand in the fake dirt here at home plate. Haney up on top. Greenwood dugouts alive. Runner at second. That's outside. Holland going the whole way. And well done. I mean, I think he was going to try to steal that bag anyway, Keith. He was on the move. 
But he, he took a great secondary, and he didn't even think twice once he saw it hit the ground. One ball, and now a, a wild pitch slash passed ball can tie this game. Let's see what Haney can do for us here up on top for Mountain Home. He kicks and fires. Swing and a miss from Skag. The boy come out of his shoes. I like it. Great cut. Yep, I agree. One ball, one strike. There's two outs here in the top of the second. Greenwood dugouts alive over there off to our right on the first base side. Haney kicks and fires. Skaggs tried to bunt for a hit and fouls it into the netting. One and two. I know what he saw. He saw the, the sun's right in the first baseman's eyes, and he's playing back. The second baseman's back. He had a huge hole. He yeah. was trying to push it, I think, towards second base. The shadows <clears throat> are growing long, but everybody's center field and to the right has the sun in their way. Looking right into the sunset, sort of like you see at Greenwood. Here's the one, two. Skaggs. This catcher sets up way outside and goes into the middle. This one's a little flare. Will it get down? Key, the second baseman backtracking, oh. makes a nice play in shallow center. That's uh, Corbin Morris ends the threat. But the Bulldogs, however, make a little bit of hay there as they get two runs across on two hits. And there was one man left on base. We are in the middle of the second inning. That gives me a chance to thank our Grand Slam sponsors, J&H Automation Solutions, Craig Gigerich State Farm Insurance, Ducks Body Shop, Freedom Roofing, MSG Waste, Shirley's Tax Services, Taylor Family Vision, Top Notch Roofing, Virtue Energy Services, Virtue and Web Energy Resources. Appreciate all of our sponsors, especially those Grand Slam sponsors. Well, Keith, we put a crooked number up. That's positive. Yeah, and you've just got to answer. You can't let them come out and score three and then not answer. So, you know, for Greenwood to answer, that's a great start. <clears throat> Mason Moore looked pretty decent, really, in the f- first inning. They just kind of had a, got three hits on him, but I thought his stuff wasn't that bad. Ooh. He will get to face their eight, nine, and top of the order. Uh, and it is going to be number six. Off the of the second inning. Their shortstop. Right handed bat. That is Finley Chafin. And a no-pitch call by Blue. His time was granted, and Mason threw it to the backstop. He starts it right, right before the umpire drops his hand. He kind of starts it, and the umpire just kind of stopped him there. That's in there for a called strike. Three hits, three runs, no errors for Mountain Home, and that just missed outside. Oh. Wow. Wow. Two runs on three hits and one error for Greenwood. Swing and a miss at some high heat. One ball and two strikes now to Finley. Carter Atkins out on deck. He's their DH. And just missed two and two. Moore up on top. He'll kick and fire. That one's laced to left. Skaggs, a few steps back. Measures, no problem for Braden Skaggs. F7 if you're scoring at home. If you're not, it's still F7. And here's Carter Atkins now. They're DH. He's a left-handed bat. And that's outside for ball one. It's just amazing how, you know, we even had a, we see a strike going for a, a pitch going for a strike. Even even the people from out home were saying they just can't hit the ball. They're just not hitting it. And, and to see them just attack the way they have at the plate, it's been just a turnaround. That's a swing and a miss and a strike. 
to Adkins. And that one just got a piece and fouled towards us. Stays alive one and two. One ball, two strikes. Moore kicks and fires. Swing and a miss. Gas on the outer half. Two down now. Second strikeout for Mason Moore. And we go to the top of the order. This is Lance, or this is Brady Lance. Now he is in left field now where Jet Hannaford started this game. He struck out in the bottom of the first and then was tossed quickly by home plate blue for arguing the strikeout. <laughs> And the first one to Brady Lance is outside for ball one. We've seen Zitzman get a quick trigger and heave ho in game one for Greenwood. Maybe uncalled for. And there's a fastball down the pipe to Brady Lance. One ball, one strike. And then Jet Hannaford certainly got the heave ho quickly. Called strike. Moore working quickly and bringing the gas. One and two. Here it comes from Mason Moore. On the right, he brings it home, and the chopper off the plate. Can Moore get there? It, he tapped it. Oh, Carnes got it. Double pump. Got him. Oh, what a play from Grant Carnes, who came flying in, had to play the carom off of Moore, the very tip of Moore's glove. Carnes snags it and throws a rocket across the d- diamond. Pettigrew waiting on it and sliding into home or into first to no avail third out. Wow, what a play from Grant Carnes. The the rule for the pitcher is if you have to reach back behind you, you let it go and let him field it. And Carnes, I don't know if he didn't have a grip, but he kind of double clutched as you see the runner slide into first and the throw just beats him there. Bang, bang. Good job by Carnes to never give up on it. We'll head to the third inning. It'll be Holt, Carnes, and Pettigrew when the Bulldogs come up to bat and it gives me a chance to thank our dugout club sponsors, Anchored Hope. Been sanitized. The Boondocks in, up on Rye Hill. Farmers Bank. Greenwood Express Lube. Liberty Roofing. Oak Bauer Pest Control. West Stark Plumbing. And Ronnie Terry Roofing. Thanks all of our sponsors. Again, we talked about the two man scramble uh, last Saturday out at Vashgrass and appreciate everybody for coming out and supporting the squad. All the sponsors that chipped in. And again, to uh, Jason Hill Shelter Insurance, he and Phil were laying the slap your mama, I believe, on the hamburger patties. Threw a couple of hot links in there on the side. Mm-mm. Magical time behind the grill there at number seven tee box from uh, Jason in uh, the Shelter Insurance, Jason Hill. All right, here we go. Ty Holt will lead us off in the top of the third. Bulldogs down three to two. Bombers put three up in the first. Greenwood answered with two in the second. Let's see if the Bulldogs can get the lead. They haven't had the lead this afternoon. Lost game one, seven to three. And pretty much an upset. Holt looks at strike one on the outer half. Right-handed batting catcher. It's one of those deals we say in most sports. By this time of the year, the freshman moniker kind of goes away. You've seen enough now where you've got to be, you're seasoned enough where you're oh, yeah. really just a ball player. One and one. That one just missed outside. West Coast sets up way outside. And ball two, good job. Not go chasing there from Holt. If you can look out of the corner of your eye, it seems set up out there. They're not going to call that for sure if if he hits his spot. Here's a 2-1. Inside, nearly hit him. 3-1 now to Holt. Don't help him out. No, that's a tough one to take there at the ankle. Hit it off that ankle bone. 17 uh, free passes for Ty. Leads the team by leaps and bounds. Let's see if he can get number 18 here. I'll take a hit either way. And upstairs he walked him. The home plate blue kind of flinched a bit, but it was high in the 18th walk for the freshman Ty Holt catcher. We'll see Trevere Shelton come in and courtesy run for him. And here's Grant Carnes. Hopefully Shelton can just trot around to home. Coach uh, Brewer over at third base. Goes for the signs. If you've listened to me at all for the last 14 years, you know that I like nothing better than watching the third base coach run through the signs. Magical. I know Keith's already stolen them. That was his forte when we were at Tech. Haney comes home with it. Carnes looks at one at the knees for strike one. Mm. Wow. That ball hit the ground almost? Just about. Shelton runs at first for the walk of Ty Holt. That's one of those I think you anticipate it's going to be a strike, and it went lower than he thought. 
setting up way outside. He hit his spot, but it's weird. Uh, I'll give their pitchers credit. We saw the guy in game one do it. When they set up out there, they hit their spot. They do, and it's, it, to me, it's on the catcher. <laughs> yes. The catcher's set up over that corner. Yep. Here's the 1-1. One, one. In there for a called strike. Good Unless pitch. maybe up here in this part of the state, maybe people swing at that, but you're talking three balls off. Yes. I mean, it's literally in the other batter box. And it's a very uh, obvious bounce out by the catcher, so I wouldn't even put my bat off my shoulder. They're going to throw over, and Shelton will scoot back. Who's courtesy running out there? Looks like 4 nothing in softball over there. Sun's glaring off the scoreboard. Lady Bulldogs on top. Carnes looks at one upstairs, two and two now to the Greenwood third baseman here. Single his first time up. Sheldon gets his lead over at first. Here it is. Carnes oh. towards the shortstop. Another double play ball. They throw to first for one or second for one. The ball's overthrown. And Carnes kind of turned in towards second. They were hollering tag, but to no avail. They'll force the courtesy runner Shelton out. That's like somebody in football yelling, tackling, tackling. Yeah. <laughs> it's easier said than done. Yeah. Please go tackle him. 6 4 on the force. For out number one, Carnes on with the fielder's choice and Brady Pettigrew now with one down. Carnes on base. Haney, the lefty up on top for Mountain Home. There goes a runner. He got an awesome jump. This time he's going to be safe. Surely, yes. Ball one to Pettigrew and now RBI chance for the Greenwood senior first baseman. Struck out to end the first inning. I mean, Carnes on first move that time, Keith. He was gone. One ball to Brady Pettigrew. Haney up on top for Mountain Home. Kicks and fires. That's mm. in there for a call strike. Oh, he wanted boy. it. He just, which here, here's what he does well. If he doesn't think he can, he won't swing at a pitch just to swing at it. He'll wait and say, okay, I should have probably swung at it, but I'll wait for something else now. Yep. Here's the 1-1 one, one now. Pettigrew swings the bat around the windmill, and now it's ready. They check on Carnes twice, now three times, and come home outside. And never made it back. I mean, that's a ball. Yep. Two and one. It's great. Great eye. Great take. It's a good job of the pitcher hitting his spot, but it's not a strike. I know. That's exactly right. Tony Sanifer over at first base. I have to say, those elbow guards on the umpire are still throwing me off. Maybe it's a pulse taker step counters. Here's a 2 1. Outside and low, three and one now. Fit bit or some kind of deal, maybe? Or? <laughs> it's not. It's it's elbow guard. I guess it's for maybe if something wings him from the side, right. maybe like right there, the way he's standing. Yep. But when he's standing with his arms to his side, we'd have to throw a ball at him from your spot. Three and one, the count to Pettigrew. Carnes at second. Here it comes from Haney. And they got him. Oh, a called strike. Just broke in there. It's not one he can drive. I'm okay with him taking yep. that one, too. Three and two now. <laughs> One out. Haney waits. Here it comes. And swing and a miss. Got him again swinging it. at it. Two down now for Jackson Cole. Cole singled his last time up to get the rally going in the second. Score to run. He's got an RBI chance. Cole scored 11 runs now on the season. He's got 16 RBI. Swing and a miss. I think he might have got an RBI in game one. Maybe 17 RBI now. No. Here's the 0 1 to Cole. Carnes gets the lead out at second. Way outside. One and one now to Jackson Cole. Three to two, Mountain Home leads. We're in the top of the third. Drew Haney up on top for Mountain Home. The lefty checks on Carnes at second, and now they're going to turn and fake a throw. Nobody covering Carnes. Trots back in. This is one of those pickoffs where you're hoping that maybe you guess that he's stealing when you lift your leg, and Carnes isn't going anywhere with two outs. He's still in scoring position if he stays right there. 
One and one to Jackson Cole. Here it comes. This one's in the air and fouled back over the top of us. One and one. Maybe been a concession stand shot. One more. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. Was it really the one more? It was the one more. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, two outs. Top of the third. Which I guess if you have natural grass in the outfield. Yeah, you got to mow it. And, hey, Cole, a little flare, but right to the second baseman. Thought it might sneak over his head, but it did not. And a little line out to the second baseman. The Bulldogs strand a runner. No hits. They've left three on base here. Middle of the third inning. Three to two. Mountain home leads here in game two of this doubleheader. Let's take a quick timeout on the Sports Hog 103.5. Uh, minutes, fine. Texas Tech up two to nothing. Hit a home run. He said the wind's blowing out hard to left. Guy just hit a change up up in the air. That'd be kind of the same. To- Yes, that'd be kind of the same direction we got going here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, yes. Out to left. And two runners on. Is that Bybee starting? Yeah. The guy that's on second hit it 106 miles an hour. We're back here at Pittsfield, McLean Park, Mountain Home, Arkansas. Tim Terry, Keith Holt, Greenwood Baseball. Dogs down three to two. Bottom of the third we go. Lost game one, seven to three. Trying to see if we can get some updates from other games around the conference. (coughs) See if they lit. See if they... Uh, lost the lead or have it now tied in conference. Called strike to Dawson Dunlap. He tried to bunt, didn't he, Keith? He did. Here's the old one. Lee went. Oh, well. Now, I thought the last time he didn't go up when they called it a strike. 1 1. to Dawson Dunlap. Here's one off the front of the plate. Sunday hop to Moore. Over to first base, no problem. One, three, one out. Dunlap had singled in the first inning and scored a run. Here's Jackson Corp. He's their right fielder. Walked and scored a run in the first. If Moore can just keep the balls low, keep getting you know ground balls, play solid defense behind him, you want to keep them at three, and Green would just kind of get a few every inning. In there for a called strike. Well, Mason Moore's dealing right now. And this home plate, Blue's giving a little bit more of that outside black. He is. And there's one sawed off. Went up under the hands and fouled off of his foot. 0-2. Oh, that one smarts for sure. A lot of these pitches we're seeing here, they're great pitches. There were great pitches when Carnes threw them but the home plate blue that's now on the field just wasn't giving them to him. Either pitcher, for that matter. We talked about it. It wasn't just Carnes not getting anything. Hmm. 0-1. 0-2, rather. Holt's gone out there to talk to Moore, let the batter give him a little chance to shake it off. Carnes comes up, gets in on the action. Ty's going to come back in and settle in behind the dish. And that usually probably comes from Adams. We'll give him time to recoup. Yes. Here's the 0-2 now to Jackson Corp. Their right fielder, Moore, brings it home. There's a little chopper. Carnes will wait on a Sunday hop off the turf and throw a rocket over to Pettigrew. So that's what Carnes told him is, look, th- throw a little chopper ball to me so I can make the play. <laughs> right. 
Here's Corwin Morris. He's 0 for 1, flat out to center. He's their first baseman. Right-handed bat. Two down for Mason Moore. And swing and a miss. And Mason has settled in after a first inning where they just kind of strung the three hits together and there was a walk in there and got their three runs across. He's been wheeling and dealing since. There's a ball fouled towards the Bombers dugout, third base side, just kind of spiked straight down in front of the plate and back towards the dugout. 0-2 now to Corwin Morris. Mason Moore kicks and fires for Greenwood. And a defensive ball right back up the box, and Moore could not find it. Mm, Looked right through him nearly. It did. Amazing. And Ryder McLean will get a chance now. A little two-out rally as Corwin's aboard. Every one of them, that's right, a bunch of their base hits, even in game one, have been right up the box. Here comes a courtesy runner. Well, usually the pitcher, pitcher at least runner, gets actually. in the way, and it's just missing him. That's Aiden Schrabel, who's actually pinch running. Morris is their first baseman. Aiden Schrabel. Hmm, that's interesting, the two-out pinch runner. Right. So there's two outs, and Ryder McLean now, who had an RBI single and scored a run in the first. Outside, Holt looked to first base, didn't throw. He got everybody's attention, heard some back calls from the bomber dugout. One ball count. Ryder McLean. We're in McLean Park. I wonder if he's related to the landowner that probably donated think so. this. Yeah. That'd be nice. That's outside. A little low, 2 0. Oh. Wait a minute. Lady Bulldogs up 14 nothing in the fifth inning. Well, that escalated quickly. Wait, well, I, and you know what? It was 14 last time, I think. I just didn't see the one. Oh. Well, I think I did see it, but I didn't want to believe it. It still escalated. Girls are up two touchdowns on the Lady Bombers. They're going to get that sweep. Stay undefeated in conference. Here's the 2 0. Outside. Good job of Holt to go out there and tromp on that thing. Keep the runner at first. They're going to be taken all the way. Heard some numbers called from Coach Crow at third. And they'll yeah. check their armbands. Take and then stay close to first so you don't get picked off. Right. Here's the 3-0 to McLean. Can Moore bring a strike? He does, right down the middle. One more just like that. I think they're taken all the way. Coach moves Grant over to the line so there's no doubles hit down the line. 3-1. Here it is. Just miss a little low, and it's a two-out walk. The Bombers have a little something going here with first and second, and Lincoln Sherry, he singled earlier in the first inning. First and second for the Bombers. Now batting number five, Lincoln Sherry. One hit. Two outs, though, here in the bottom of the third. Bombers lead 3-2. to two. Greenwood lost game one here. 7-3. to three. Wasn't really that close. There's a shot towards short. Morgan on a nice hop. We'll have to go to first. Completes it. Well done in the hole there. Brady, a nice play. Having to back up a little bit towards third base. Makes the play. Greenwood gets out of it. There was one hit. No runs. No errors. Two men left on base. And through three innings of baseball in the 5A West, Greenwood trails the Mountain Home Bombers here in Mountain Home, 3-2. to two. I want to thank our Grand Slam sponsors, JH Automation Solutions, Craig Gigrich, State Farm Insurance, Ducks Body Shop, Freedom Roofing, MSG Waste, Shirley's Tax Services, Taylor Family Vision, Top Notch Roofing, Virtue Energy Services, Web Energy Resources. Three to two. Greenwood coming to bat will be Austin Mitchell. 
uh, Scott Holland and Austin Mercher. Appreciate all the folks came out to the basketball banquet last night. Rumor yeah. has it you stepped down from the booster club. I did. How I'm, many years have you done that? Well, I've been the president for probably about seven, maybe. But I've been on the booster club, obviously, for a while. But kids are all gone. Let some par- parents get in there and help their own kids out. Get some fresh faces, fresh ideas. Who's taking over for you? Don't know yet, so it's up for grabs. You're more than welcome to. Oh, I, I, I have enough time. I should. <laughs> I mean, I'm not doing anything ever. I will certainly still be around if they want to do some broadcasting of any sort, radio, live stream, or both. And I'll certainly be around for some concession help and whatever else I can do. But uh, certainly enjoyed the night with Coach Reeves and Coach Ross and the players and families. Fantastic time. All right, here's Austin Mitchell now. Singled, scored a run in the second. Good pitch. Finally made it the catcher. If you notice, he stayed more behind the plate, and the pitcher did a good job hitting the spot. Three to two, Mountain Home, top of the fourth. Swing and a miss from Mitchell. That one was low in the fake dirt, but he went after it. Haney still working hard for Mountain Home, the lefty. Outside. Good take. He wanted to offer. Again, it looks the catcher's making it look worse than it is. That was actually pretty close. Mm-hmm. There he is, way outside again. Key the two-one or one-two rather, and Mitchell went after it. I think that one came back in. It maybe did. got to the strike zone, huh? That one was definitely a strike. Here's Scott Holland, an RBI single in the second. Got stranded over at third base. Green went down one run. Holland, first pitch swing. <clears throat> Excuse me, towards the brewer over in the coach's box. Foul ball. When you see both him and Coach Sanford have boxes, and again, they have total disregard for the white paint. Uh, that was low ball one. A little bit of a question last week. When Was it Harrison? Who was in town? Who did we play last week? But Harrison... They weren't real happy with the Santa no. coach's box status. Swing and a miss from Holland. One ball, two strikes. His complete disregard for location <laughs> over at first base had him discombobulated. <laughs> right. Good wordage. Here's the one, two. Way outside. Two and two. It's almost like a pitch out with no runners. Yeah. Here's the two and two now. With one down to Holland. He rips this one. Will it stay fair? No, oh, it's hooked and foul. Two and two still to the Greenwood designated hitter who did his job and hit, got a hit in his first at bat in the second inning. He's one for one with an RBI. Here's the two two now to Scott Holland. Drew Haney up on top. Gets the sign from West Coat, his battery mate. That's way high. The count's full now for Holland. 15 nothing now the Lady Bulldogs lead. This one's fixing to end over there in a run rule. <laughs> They're at the bottom of the fifth. Well, this is big. Upstairs, they walked him. Holland and Bircher back-to-back. You have speed. I mean, I'm not saying Morgan's not fast, but it's, it, it's not. It's not the same as having yep. those two back-to-back. And if you get something started with them, it makes Morgan's job a lot easier to get back to the top of the lineup. Here's Bircher now. An RBI ground out his last time up to the shortstop. Bircher, a right-handed bat. Haney up on top. On the fake grass a little bit at third, just in case. They throw over Holland two steps back in, no problem. As they throw over to first base. Left-handed pitcher. Carnes swiped a bag earlier. Really on first move. I think that's about the only stolen base I can recall. He was cut down in the first game. Bunt was showed and pulled back. Ball one. <clears throat> one out. Bircher a lot of times will try to bunt for a hit. Rarely. It's just hard on turf with a third yeah. baseman playing in because you can't really kill it. Right. I mean, you have to be really good at killing it. Swing and a miss that time. One ball, one strike. That's a fact. 
One out here in the top of the fourth, three to two Mountain Home. They had three in the bottom of the first. Bulldogs answer with two in the top of the second. And zeros since then. Here's the one one to Bercher. Curveball in there. Whew. One and two. That's one Bercher would like to have back, I think. That thing was hanging. Holland's got a lead over it first. A good lead. And the one two. They come home with it. Bercher lifts this one in the air. Holland's got a retreat. Infield fly. No, not infield fly. No, I, I wish it, it might as well have been Holland who had to stay there because the ball's going to be caught, and they let it drop, and he gets forced out at second. And how about that? The only thing Holland can do is anticipate that a little bit more and just get a bigger lead, and then and as soon as it hits, take off. He was kind of going back. He thought it was going to be easily caught. He was kind of going back towards first. Uh, but really, there's nothing you can do about that when it's supposed to be caught. No. Yeah, he had no chance, no reason to get any further away. It was certainly a chance of getting doubled off. That's tough sledding. Either way, here's Bryce Morgan, or Brady Morgan, rather. And a two outs now. Mm. Bertrand on with the fielder's choice. It's called strike. Mm. Ain't even going to throw over. Bless you. <laughs> oh, and one the count to Brady Morgan. There goes the runner, and they throw down, and this is going to be out. They're going to call him safe, and I cannot believe it. That was a great throw, an even better play by Morris, who came, or uh, Dunlap, rather, who came sliding in, literally had his glove just kind of, well, he slid past close. the bag. If Bercher slides it outside towards center field, it's not even close. Bercher slid straight towards the bag because yep. the guy was late getting there. He drops his glove on the on the mound side of second, <laughs> and it's not even close, but he almost slid right into his glove. That's exactly what it did. The ball just landed right in his glove. Wow. And Coach Crow wants to talk about it. And there's nothing to talk about. I mean, no. the guy's like, oh, you you don't think he did? Let me change that. He right. ain't going to change it. No. Yeah, you see their third baseman said, let's go to review that, which, you know, it would certainly be a difference. He would be out if they had to review. Oh, but nonetheless, he's safe, and Bercher's stolen a bag. It's a 1-1 count. So, Morgan back to work. Two outs. And Haney up on top for Mountain Home. Checks on the runner at second. Bercher, he'll come home with the 1-1. Breaking ball just missed on the outside. Two and one now. I guess if you're a high school coach, all you're thinking you can do there is manipulate the umpires to where they give you a call here in a minute. I mean, you're trying to talk them into it. I mean, there's nothing really can come out of that. Here it is. Fastball's fouled back into the creek off to our right. Two and two. Lady Bulldogs get that run rule win. 15 nothing in five innings. Haley McAdams, a one hitter over there. Two and two now to Brady Morgan, Greenwood shortstop. They come home with it and just got a piece of it, fouled it straight back. Good piece to fight off. Probably, I mean, you just don't know. I think I it was going to be a strike. It was going to be close. And if it's going to be close, you do what he did, foul it off and get another pitch. Three or two and two now to Brady Morgan. Right-handed bat, left-handed pitching. Drew Haney, here it comes. Just missed outside. Looked close from the bomber dugout, I'm certain. Coach Crow's livid over there. He hadn't been happy. Even when they were winning earlier, he wasn't happy. He wasn't happy down at Greenwood last year, if I recall. He strikes me as just not being able to be made happy. Three and two the count. Payoff pitch. And... Morgan stays alive, fouls this one over on top of the Greenwood dugout. Bercher out at second base, reached on a fielder's choice. Swiped the bag, officially. Unofficially was gunned down, I thought. 
Greenwood is trailing three to two here, top of the fourth. Let's see if Morgan can find an RBI here. Haney kicks and fires for Mountain Home, and it's high. Oh, they're going to pull the string on a ball way high. And wow, that is our Maybelline makeup call of the evening, sponsored by Maybelline. Well, the Bulldogs leave a man on base. That's the fourth they have. No hits, no runs, no errors. Middle of the fourth inning. Let's take a quick timeout. It's Greenwood Baseball on YouTube, Greenwood Sports Center, and the Sports Hog 103.5. 30 seconds, fun. See, the difference is Brewer walks by, and I'm sure he thought that was a ball, but he doesn't say anything to the umpire. He's not going to be like, look here, I'm I'm a whiner. I'm going to complain. I'm a complainer. He just, I'm, I 100% know he thinks that was a ball. Sure. But I like the fact he just walks by. Like, look, you can't, you can't fade me. Yeah, you can't fade me. One game we had an umpire that kind of walked over and tried to get in the, the line of fire to get some slack and Burr just walked by. Yeah, him. cold shoulder, shoulder. Yeah. The, silent, the silence is deafening. Hey, we're back. Here at Pittsfield, McLean Park. Greenwood Mountain Home, game two of this 5A West doubleheader. Tim Terry, Keith Holt, Bulldogs, desperate for a win here to get the split on the road after being upset in a lackluster performance in game one, losing 7-3. to three. And two of those runs came in the final at-bat. Bulldogs could not get the hit. The bat's going at all. No. Here's Drew Haney, their pitcher now, leading off the bottom of the fourth. He flares one high chopper to first base. Pettigrew, well done, fielding his position. Three unassisted. You like one pitch, one out. Mm-hmm. Here's Finley Chaffin, <coughs> their shortstop. He's 0 for 1. Now batting the shortstop, number six, Finley Chaffin. It's Finley Chaffin. I beg your pardon. Pardon. By the way, Haney's grounded out to Pettigrew twice now to end the first and begin the fourth. Moore's first pitch is in there for a called strike. Wow. Just caught the top of the zone. Here's the 0-1 outside. Mm. One and one. Carter Atkins on deck there, DH. Left-handed bat. Just outside. Two and one now to Chafin, their shortstop, flat out to left to lead off the second inning. That one's fouled into the netting. Strike two. The zone has morphed. It's it's morphed a little bit. It it was one way, and then he set himself up to where he's had to change it. And that's in there for a backwards K. Boy, buckle the knees, Keith. Chafin had no chance. No. Third strikeout for Moore. Here's their nine-hole, Carter Atkins, their DH. With one out. Left-handed bat. Shows bunt and didn't pull back. No, he's, oh, whoa, oh. no way. <laughs> wow. They check the peel down to first. They say he didn't go. I don't know. Very strange. Ball one. Good thing you don't see us griping and complaining. You just take it. Wow, and then he called, misses a ball that's a strike. Just a little wow. inside. It's chaos. Holt kind of double clutch there, waiting for it, held him for a second. 2-0. That one's certainly inside. Nearly hit him on the leg. 3-0. Amazing. More kicks and fires. High strike at the letters, which I love the high strike. We know that. Yes. And just, he, but he hadn't called that the entire mm-hmm. game no. until the last inning. Right. Now he has to call it. They have to call the strike. Same pitch. We saw ball two, but it's a strike this time. It we'll take ball it. Ball two. Now it's... Full count. Mm-hmm. Wow. There's the chopper. Cole's going to wait on it. Got it on the two hopper. Nice little shot over to Pettigrew. One, two, three, and they go. No problem from uh, Moore, who's really settled in now, Keith, since that first inning. He looks good, and he's he's getting ahead of pitchers. He's not our batters. He's not trying to to strike everybody out. He's just trying to get soft contact because I think he's figured out, especially on this field, 
there, how, how many ground balls have we seen skip through for hits? It's mm-hmm. all either been hits to the outfield or choppers that are outs. Right. So if you can keep it down and get a ground ball, you're you're doing well. And I think Moore's got that figured out as we saw two infield uh, outs that that were easy. Bulldogs coming to bat in the top of the fifth. It'll be the top of the order, Key. So, again, it's go time here as we trail by one, three to two. Skaggs, Holt, and Carnes really need to get going here to try to get some work done in game two here and salvage a split on the road, show a little wherewithal. If you're tuned into us and forgot that there's a midweek game up in Fayetteville, Arkansas is getting pounded right now by Texas Tech. Six nothing in the bottom of the second. Give up all six runs in the second inning. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean it was it was tough. A couple walks, a couple hits, a home run. Well, here's Braden Skaggs. Struck out. In the first inning, a fly, a, a, a fly ball out to the second baseman. It was caught in shallow right. And here's Drew Haney back to work for Mountain Home. Way outside. That one kind of got loose. Ball one. Curveball didn't move a bit. Three to two, Mountain Home leads. Top five. Here it is. In the dirt. The fake dirt. Two and oh. And Haney wants a new ball. Got a little bit of Astro scuff on it. Clouds have kind of moved out. Nothing but a little bit of streamers going across the sky. Outside, 3-0. and oh. Need base runners. The wind's died down just a little. Still probably 5-10, to 10, blowing out to left probably down to about 70 degrees. 3-0 count to Skaggs leading off the fifth there. And Haney brings it home. Called strike. Just caught the inner half. 3-1 now. Let's see what Skaggs can do with it. And he foul. It's this one in play in the air. Second baseman retreats. And we're going to have problems as this right fielder came flying in. That was Corp. He makes the catch, and it looked like it was fixing to be disastrous. Well, he's, when the second baseman starts backpedaling towards it, I mean, he backpedaled a while. You knew something, somebody was misjudging it, and then in comes the uh, the right fielder and catches it below his head, like catches out in front of him. It just wasn't smooth. Here is Ty Holt now. He is over one with a walk. Fly out the center. He asked for time, got out of there, and really – <laughs> Home plate blue hadn't gave it yet. The pitcher pulled up. Mm. Called strike. Owen oh, won the count. Haney up on top. Here it comes. Holt just tipped it off the catcher's mask. Owen oh, two now. Ties in a hole. King Mountain's got us tuned in. T. Rock Miller and T. Roy Miller. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Trying to get these boys to split up here on the road in the trout fishing capital of the world. Here's the 0-2. Upstairs, good eye from Holt. One ball, two strikes to the Greenwood catcher. Haney kicks and fires. Holt hits this one to right. It's in the air. Right fielder measures to his right, makes the catch. We're out number two. Second put out over there in right field for Corp. And here's Grant Carnes now, the last chance for Greenwood. He's one for two, reached on a fielder's choice. Singled in the first. Two down now. Greenwood down one run. We're in the fifth inning. Outside, ball one. Haney for Mountain Home brings it home. Cards rips this one. Second baseman dove, knocked it down, but no play. Well done by their second baseman. That's a fantastic play, but it's an infield hit. Ball hit. Did he fall on his hand? What's what's hurting on him? 
Sure may have. Dunlap with a nice dive. It was an awkward dive. Looks like it maybe his arm. He kind of knocked the ball down with his glove, and then I think maybe fell on his other hand, and he's in pain, and the umpires are asking the coach to come out kind of with a little bit of a hurry. And he's certainly writhing in pain. Speaking of Troy Miller, I want to thank him for getting the Greenwood Sports Center van door operational. So they'll corral around him. Coach is out. They're laughing it off a little bit. Maybe the ball fell on his nether regions. Normally when you see a lot of jovial action from male species after an injury, it's something to do with getting hit in the nether area. Oh, yeah. But here's Pettigrew with Carnes aboard with an infield hit. He's two for uh, three now. And Pettigrew struck out twice. He's due. How about a conference long ball, Brady? Let's go, baby. Two down here in the top of the fifth. Dogs down a run. Pettigrew represents the go-ahead run here at the plate. And time is asked for. Haney took a while peering into Westcoat, his battery mate. They've got the sign now. The Pettigrew's ready. So is Haney up on top. He'll look at at Carnes. And come home, and Pettigrew golfs one. Is it going to get down? It's towards the right field line. It's a fair ball. And it, the right fielder misplayed it. Corp, who's been fantastic, misplayed that one. Karn scores from first base. An RBI double. Oh, baby, for Pettigrew. Very nice. It had crazy spin on it to where when it hit, it completely fooled the right fielder, got by him, and went to the corner. <clears throat> Well, that ball, he gave a good effort. It just landed right inside the line and just, like you said, mass eight away from him. Instead of trying to catch that, if he kind of would have got around behind it, he could have fielded it on the bounce. Instead, it went past him to the corner. An RBI double for Pettigrew, and Greenwood has tied this ball game up. Here's Jackson Cole now with an RBI chance of his own. First pitch is inside on the inner half, called strike. When get, get, get Harns with two outs, I mean, he was thinking he was going to score if it was down anyway. Whether right. it was foul or fair, he That's was right. thinking score. Yeah, you saw the speed from the junior first for third baseman. Here's the old one now to Cole, our second baseman. Laid off, good take, outside one and one. We've tied this thing up here in the field, Bulldogs, with some life here. Two hits in the inning. Cole, another one would give us the lead. There's a shot towards short, gobbles it up, gathers to first, ball, pull him off. He did, he pulled him off. Brewer was trying to send Pettigrew. Thankfully, he didn't. I think that the throw was caught there. In case there would have been an argument, Pettigrew probably would have got cut down. But it's an error, and we'll take it. A base runner. The throw just passed uh, first base to the right field side, pulled the first baseman, E6. And time is asked for by Mitchell and granted. Bulldogs in business here and rallying on two outs with runners at the corners. Here's Mitchie. Singled, struck out, scored a run in the thir- second. First pitch right down the mid. Ooh. Ooh. Ball one. Where was that at? I, 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 I'm tired of trying to think about yeah. what's a strike. It's like the you got me earlier when you said you couldn't draw the strike zone. That's yeah. fantastic. <laughs> That's great analysis. Here's the one zero to Mitchell. <laughs> oh, and they throw over to first, and Cole back in, no problem. Jackson's been on twice. The single and then reaching on an error. Here's Haney now up top. Peers in. He's got the sign he wants in a tie game now, top of the fifth. Comes home, called strike. One and one to Mitchell. He's a center fielder. If you see him get two strikes and may, maybe here, you may see a leave early, still on first movement, and see if he can have something happen. One ball, one strike. Here it comes from Haney. Swing and a miss. Mitchell, maybe a good pitch to hit, just a little late on the swing. Donald Hart, the Lady Bulldog softball coach, easing over here to watch the boys of summer play a little ball. Donald, a teammate of yours down at Arkansas Tech back in the day. Yep, it's been four years together. Here's the one-two now to Mitchell with two outs. Runners at the corners and stepping off. 
they know it's going. Cole kind of gave it away a little early. And the catcher comes up. And he's going to leave early and try to entice the throw. Here's the one, two. Sandifer barking over at Jackson saying, take off. There goes Cole. They're going to get him. Now they're going to throw over and get him in the pickle. And Cole gets tagged out. Now they try the double steal. And maybe Cole got a little too deep. They threw over and let him got close to second. I like the idea. Maybe try to sneak one in, but he's cut down one, four, caught stealing, and that's out number three. Well, Keith, we're tied, so it didn't cost you the game. Uh, maybe they throw it away. I don't know how, how else. You, what's the best way, uh, in your opinion, to get? You make the pitcher turn his back. You make him run at you, so you stop halfway to make the pitcher run towards you. And then either the third baseman's got to read it and be coming down the line, and then you just got to the force runner something. on third. The runner, yes. yes, the runner right. at third. Yep. And then when once the pitcher, once you force him to give it up, as soon as he lets go, that's when you take off. You, you, everything's got to be a perfect exchange, and right. if you've made your way down the line, it's almost impossible to get you. So I think a shout out to Mountain Home. They waited and let Cole get very close before they threw over there. And really, uh, the pickle, he was going to be dead meat unless they had a throwing error. No chance for the run to score. Uh, if you're not going to run at him, you wait till he gets where he did. Make a good throw to second. And you got him. So. I mean, you don't do that if Mitchell has two strikes. I mean, right. he, he, he did it because, what, Mitchell struck out his last at bat? What did Mitchell do his last at bat? He did. The yeah, single and, and the strikeout. Yeah, and, and so you're you're kind of like, well, let's take our chances if we can just get this run in, and and it just didn't work out. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's something you can work on and keep it in your back pocket for later. Ooh. So here is Brady Lance. He is their leadoff batter who took the spot of Jet Hannaford who got tossed in the bottom of the first inning for arguing a ball and a strike. That's in there for a called strike. One and one now to Brady Lance. Three to three. New ball game here. Bottom five. Mason Moore to work. This one's in the air a mile high. Who will find it? It'll be Morgan can't find it. Cole got it just as it came back into the lights. Well done, Jackson. That's a tough one there, Keith, as it went way above the lights. Yeah, and high school lights are yeah. smaller than <laughs> the big league lights, and that's what happens. They get above the lights. you got to wait for them to come back down. And a pop out to the second baseman for out number one, Jackson Cole. Here's Dawson Dunlap now. He's their second baseman. Tie game here in the bottom of the fifth. Moore working for Greenwood. His pitch count is not very high. I don't think he has, after that first inning, is the first pitch swing and fouled back into the creek. Well, 13, 18, 21, 23, 26. And this is shot towards Pettigrew. Nice job. Pulled the anti-Bill Buckner. Fields a hot grounder down there. Well done from Pettigrew. Another three unassisted. He's played well over at first base tonight. He has, and, you know, it's... it's has for a couple he, of years. Yeah, well, but the last couple of games, we we said he was in kind of a lull and yep. and don't know if his body didn't feel good or, or what, but it's like he's back. I want to say he's back. He does have spring in his step. He I can does. See kind of, there's some fist pumping out there. There's some little trash talking. 67th pitch on the way is a strike for Jackson Corp, their right fielder, and more pitching a dandy here. Here's the old one. That's outside. One ball, one strike. Three to three. Greenwood hanging around here in the second game of this twin bill. Need to get a split before they head back down the hill to Titletown. Time is asked for by Jackson Corp and granted. And Moore's up on top. He's ready. Here comes the 1-1. One, one. Swing and a miss. Well, that thing's just moving all over the place. Nasty. One ball, two strikes. And people can make a move like that, but to be able to control where it goes yes. and how it goes, he's done excellent at that. That's outside. Good <clears throat> take right there from Corp. The ball looked fat and broke out, and Holt had to go get it in the left-hand batter's box. Deuce is wild here. 
bottom of the fifth. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Mason Moore got him swinging. A nasty breaking ball. Off speed action. And Moore has settled in. One, two, three, fourth strikeout for the Greenwood pitcher. Five innings in the books. We will take a break as the Bulldogs and the Bombers tied up at three here in 5A West action on the road in Mountain Home. Tim Terry and Keith Holt on the Sports Hog 103.5. 30 seconds is fine. Wood came in to pitch. <clears throat> There's runner at third, two outs. All right. Top three. Payday batters again yet? He, he'll be up next inning. <clears throat> we welcome you back to Mountain Home. Pitts Field. McLean Park. We're right over here, right behind the, I guess just north of the football field. Man, and this game's moving on. What? Yeah. I mean, it's going by fast. We thought the first one went by pretty quick. This one's going by pretty quick as well. Yeah, we've been playing for an hour and 20 minutes, roughly. And here comes Scotty Holland. Actually, Mitchell should be leading off. Hey, okay, that's Mitch now. Yeah, I saw Holland in the on-deck circle. Mitchell, Holland, Bercher, 6, 7, and 8 for Greenwood. Mitchell, who was up whenever Cole got caught in the rundown. Mitchell, one for two so far with a single and a run scored. And he had a one-two count, so a fresh set of balls and strikes for Mitchie. Haney back to work for Mountain Home, and the lefty has a breaking ball that fooled Mitchell, swinging the miss. Oh and one. Outside. One ball, one strike. Here it comes to Mitchell. Outside. Two and one. Not gonna chase. He's picky. Mm hmm. Sometimes it's to his detriment that he's so picky he waits too long to pull the trigger. I like to see him chase after that curveball. If that's what he was looking and you got it. Yep. <clears throat> he did there, swinging a miss, two and two. He's got to be looking, because if you don't, if he just looks to swing, he tends, has a tendency to pull that front shoulder and misses it. 2-2, two, two. here it is. Late on it, it's tailing in foul territory where they get there. Oh, off the glove of the first baseman. Well, tried to go Willie Mays style over the shoulder, but to no avail. New life for Mitchell. Got to make the most of it. You get a second life, got to mm-hmm. make the most of it here. No outs, lead off. Mm-hmm. Here he comes. Haney up on top. The lefty from Mountain Homes gone the whole way here for him. Upstairs, three and two now to Mitchell. Greenwood center fielder. Nice to see a little leadoff walk here would come in handy. You know, you can almost have a scouting report as we see. He did. He walked him. Walked him. It's against them to where you put your toes on the white line and you try to hit everything over the second baseman's head in a line drive and just look away because I don't think the catcher's set up inside to one of our batters yet. Not everything once. is outside. He, When he gets behind the plate, it looks like it's inside because <laughs> he's been so far outside. For sure. Here's Scott Holland now, RBI, single, and a walk. He hasn't been out yet here in this second game. And he shows bunt. It's in the air. Get down on the ground. It did not. It popped up. Oh, that's a tough one for Holland. And a little bunt pop out to the catcher for the first out. Mm. Seven, Here's Bercher. And that I will drive tell, a coach crazy. The bar kind of got – did he Did he try to drag bunt or was it a straight uh, sacrifice? I think it was just a straight sacrifice. One out for Austin Bercher. RBI ground out and reached on a fielder's choice. One out, top of the sixth. Inside, ball one. And he missed inside. The catcher was again set up <laughs> way outside. 
unfortunately it wasn't called a strike. 1-0 count to Bircher, our right fielder, in there for a called strike. Good pitch. I've certainly enjoyed this guy behind the plate more. Oh, yeah, for sure. Here's a 1-1. They throw over. A lot more consistency. Right. Mitchell back in, no problem at first base. Here's a 1-1. Upstairs, 2-1. and one. Three to three, Greenwood Mountain home. The top of the six will play seven innings, unless we're tied after that. It's game two of this 5A West battle. Here's the 2 1 to Bircher. It's upstairs, three and one. Only one out here. Bulldogs already with the leadoff walk from Mitchell. Brady Morgan out on deck for the Bulldogs. I can see Bircher get the ball in play here and get some base runners moving. For sure. Here's the 3 1. Inside and he walked it. We'll take a couple of walks, however, Keith. Both the Austins have walked. And here comes Coach Crow. And this may be all for Haney, the lefty, with Brady Morgan coming up. And he's 0 for 2. And right back goes the coach. Got the old green playbook, which is actually orange, but in the water boy it was green. Yes. He crossed into fair territory. Is that kind of a trip? <laughs> if so, he'll have to come out. There he goes. One out here in the top of the six Bulldogs with two walks. And that's going to be all for Haney, the lefty. Pretty good outing for Drew Haney against this Greenwood team. And looks like... They're going to bring in number seven. We'll see who that is. Shortly. If I can find my roster. There it is. And... He's a right-hander. Carney, Maddox Carney. We'll come in here with one out in the sixth. So five and a third. But we can't really close the books yet on Haney because he's got the two runners on board that are his. And you got to make something out of this. I mean, you've got to make something. <clears throat> you know, you're getting later in the game. They're going to have the hammer and you've gotten into their bullpen. This is where you need to go ahead and pounce. And I, I think I think Mountain Home will be satisfied with a split. Yes. And I think if we can get a couple of runs, they'll be like, okay, that's fine. We won the first one and they'll be good with that. I can't argue with that. And now at home, obviously they're obviously going to give a little more oomph. Yes. But no, those certainly wouldn't. You'd hope mentally they would stay, think satisfied. Exactly. <clears throat> One out, first and second for Greenwood. Today's game being brought to you in part by our dugout club sponsors: Anchored Hope, Ben Sanitized, Boondocks, Farmers Bank, Greenwood Express Lube, Liberty Roofing, Oak Bauer Pest Service, West Ark Plumbing, and Ronnie Terry Roofing. Well. Here's Brady Morgan. He's in the nine hole. There's one out. We're going to get back to the top of the order, barring a double play ball. An 0 for 2 here in the nightcap for Morgan. He's due. We've seen him a couple of times this year in conference play here in the second game to get some timely hits and a couple of RBI at that. Most of them right back up the box, if I recall. Yeah. We'll take one right now with some speed out there with Mitchie and Bircher. The Austins at first and second. Here's the first pitch. And it's high and tight from Maddox Carney. Ball one. Tie game. 
Top of the six. Bulldogs looking for a split here tonight. Carney kicks and fires. That's right down Broadway. One and one. Lady Bulldogs with a sweep tonight in the softball diamond. They stay atop the conference undefeated in conference play. Here's a 1-1 to Brady Morgan. Two peaks back at Mitchell, and he'll come home. There's a shot towards short. Mitchell had to reroute. They go to second for one. Not in time. And there's corners now for Greenwood. Morgan reaches on the fielder's choice, and it'll be up to Skaggs. 6-4, Six four out number two at second base. This is kind of Skaggs' pitcher too. Skaggs, mm-hmm. may, you may see him swing at this first pitch here, jump on him for a base hit. <clears throat> two outs. Skaggs over here in the nightcap. Ready to go here. Over three. Let's see what he can do here against this Carney kid. Right hander comes set, looks over at third and brings it home. Nope, he's going to throw first to third. Fake them both. No throw. Big chance here for Greenwood. Can they get the go-ahead run at 90 feet away to the plate somehow? I wouldn't mind one back to the backstop. A foot race to the plate. Here it comes from Carney. Breaking ball inside. Good eye from Skaggs. Really good take. Just stayed in. Yep. Braden Skaggs. Time for him to break out. He's been pretty good all year. I want to see him be great. Fastball. There you go, Keith. Right into center field, and the Bulldogs take the lead on an RBI. Go. The ball juggled, but Bercher couldn't get the read on it. He'll stay at second. Is that Bercher or Morgan? Oh, yes, you're right. That is Morgan. Bercher was forced out. Oh, either way, it's the Greenwoods lead. Morgan over here, RBI single. And Morgan's going to get better at running the bases. He hadn't been on base a whole lot True. in, in conference games. But he's got to be reading that. And as soon as that bounces off, he's got to keep going. Yep. He's, he's got the play in front of him. He, he doesn't need to look at coach. Here's Ty Holt now still with a runner in scoring position. Two outs. And the breaking ball's outside to the Greenwood catcher. Ball one. Bulldogs finally have found the lead here late in game two. Top of the sixth inning. Four to three, an RBI single from Skaggs. Just what we asked for. Now Holt will wait on the 1-0 right down the middle. He just fouls it out of play over the first base dugout. 1-1. One and one. Mm. And Coach Brewer is going to have Holt come down. and He'll have a fireside chat about halfway down the third baseline. One ball, one strike. Greenwood leads 4-3. to three. three runs from Mountain Home came in the first inning. Greenwood answered with two in the second. Then we had a pitcher's duel. With through into the fifth inning, Bulldogs scratched one across, and now they've done it again against this relief pitcher. Haney just given up a couple of walks and got pulled. Ty's got to get back to his confidence of hitting line drives like he like he did. Here is the pitch, the one one two on for Holt, and time called getting granted by home plate blue. Coach Crow frustrated over there in the Mountain Home dugout. One and one. Steal the count to Ty Holt. Here it comes from Carney. And he drives that one just a little late. Get down. It's in foul ground. First baseman chases again. This time he makes the catch in foul ground. And that will end the inning for the Bulldogs. But there was some damage done. I see one hit, two runs, two were left on base. And the Bulldogs with the lead now, heading to the bottom of the sixth inning. Let's see if Mason Moore can continue his magic we've seen so far here through the latter half of this baseball game. We're live on YouTube, Greenwood Sports Center. Appreciate Sean Holland. Engineering and producing. Joy Buffkin running the cameras. I guess the camera didn't really. We are worried about weather, mostly, I believe. So, we didn't get a chance to get <coughs> all of the regalia set up. A lot of work, especially on the road. A long road trip. Takes a long time to break all the stuff down. The setup's not too bad. The breakdown is the problem at the end when it's late. 
God forbid we were to get swept here tonight, and then it would just be even more painstaking. <laughs> Sometimes you'll get some parents will help out with the tear down of the equipment. Uh, on this road trip, mom and dad, grandmas, they're ready to get home. So, and it's not just jumping on the interstate. I mean, no. you're, <laughs> right. You're going through some countryside. For the Bombers, it's going to be Corwin Morris leading off their first baseman, then Ryder McLean and Lincoln Sherry, the four, five, and six. Um, Morris is one for two. McLean is one for one with a walk, RBI, and a run score, and one for two for Lincoln. So some boys have been getting the bat on the ball. Here's Morris back on top for Greenwood. And the right-hander peers into Holt. He's ready. Here it comes. The first one at the bottom of the six is a swing and a miss to Corwin Morris. <clears throat> oh, and one now to Morris. Moore kicks and fires. That's just missed outside. Even better take. One ball, one strike. Mason Moore. Breaking ball in there, just filthy stuff. Came in and just locked up the batter. One and two. Thing almost fell off the batter's elbow and into the strike zone. Moore up on top. He's ready. Here it comes. Same pitch. Pull cued down the first baseline. Get it fair. And they tried to, but it stayed foul. They'd worked hard, hoping it'd spin back in. Obviously, no grass dirt cut here on this fake infield. Natural grass outfield if you're just joining us. My mother's got us tuned in. Hello, mother. One ball, two strikes. Happy birthday to my daughter, Harley. 22 today. Here's the one, two from Moore. And there's a shot. Carnes, one hop gobble. Rocket across to Pettigrew. No problem. Five, three on the put out. And Ryder McLean now. He has not been out. We have not got him out yet here in game two. A single and a walk. Four to three, Greenwood. Bottom I, of the six. I feel like Mountain Home's pressing a little bit more than Greenwood is right now. They, they I mean, this is more like what I imagine they're, them being. Right. Here's a breaking ball that was fouled off. Great pitch from Moore. McLean just laid on it, pulled it out of Ty's glove, basically. Fouls it off right side. Moore has just been magical. That hat cocked to the side up on top. Just old school sand lot action. Here's the old one. And he went. Wow. Oh, oh we gosh. Check swing. He, this is bad. Coach Brewer is just livid over there, and I don't blame well, him. Sand for two. I mean, oh, it's this boy. is crazy. Here's the one. Their first base coach just thanked him. Yeah. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And just missed inside, 2-1. and one. one out here in the bottom of the sixth. More kicks and fires. There you go. Swing and a miss. 2-2. Two and two. Four to three, Greenwood. One run lead. Hanging on here in game two of this doubleheader. Trying to get a split. Here comes the 2-2 from Moore. Just missed inside. Full count. Mm. Up underneath his hands. One out. Bottom of the sixth. Here's Moore quickly bringing it home. There's a ball lifted to the left. Can Morgan get to it? He couldn't. Just over his head. And a one-out single for Ryder McLean. Maybe Grant can pick up his thumbs over there and give them back to him. <laughs> That's right off his handle. Yep. So a one-out single. And Lincoln Sherry now, who singled in the first inning and then grounded out to short to end the third. He's one for two. Tying runs aboard for the Bombers. Bottom of the sixth. Seven innings scheduled here. And this 5A West pivotal game, really, for both teams. Oh, for sure. This is huge. Yep. 
Implications Bowman. go up and down the yep. entire conference. One out for Sherry. First pitch is upstairs. And we're not talking about just for Greenwood and Mountain Home, but you're talking about Van Buren, yep. all the guys there on the bubble. Brewer's going to come out and talk to Moore. He's still upset about the check swing out there. I would assume this meeting's going to take a little bit and uh, make the umpires walk out and talk to him. It will, but, you know, that's one thing that, that I like about Brewer. Is he's not a crybaby. He can be mad about it all day long. <clears throat> I, mean, it, I want you to have some emotion, but he's some, we've seen so many coaches that they spend so much time crying. It's right. about them and not to name any names like Russellville or anything. I mean, you know, McCrotty, I love McCrotty. But, golly, have you seen any coaches that gripe and cry more than some of the coaches in this conference? You know, this guy here is – Oh, he's right up there with him. Yeah. But well, that's part of it. Yeah, Each this, coach has you make it deal. about you. You make it about you instead of about the kids in baseball because you're not going to change anything. They throw over and back safely is share is a McLean. The only defense I can give you is sometimes the kids like to see the coach get fired up and and maybe he's, like, he's got our back. Let's go. It it turns you take on the personality of your coach and it turns everybody into crybabies. Right here's the one zero. And this is Sherry in there. And if and you can show me just one time outside. that a coach talked an umpire into reversing his call, it's, then I'll retract everything I just I said. I don't think it's ever happened. Again, it's more of a chance to fire up your team, I guess, and your crowd. And say, so, so you do it strategically, coach. though. But if you do sure. it every time, I agree. Then, yeah, yeah you, that, that's what. I'm, yeah, yeah, I agree with is. you. I know what you're there, you got to pick and choose when you do that. That's right. But every call, four times a game, mm-hmm. your your kids become numb to it. Right. That's outside. Good job for Hope. Flag that one down. No, I, I'm not saying don't ever argue. Right. Just pick and choose. Don't don't argue after every call. Three ball count to Lincoln Sherry, their third baseman. One out here, already a man on with a single from McLean. He's at first base and Morris. Mason Moore just high on the four pitch walk. And Come rarely you do you up. see the coach come out and talk and not have a strike thrown, but he walked this guy and Brewer's gonna go to Mitchie. He's already signaled to the center field and Moore let the bounce the ball. He knew he was had one more chance, couldn't get the double play ball. I like to see that from the competitor. It'll be a night for more. Well done from Mason Moore. He went five and a third. For the Bulldogs. Well, let's see here. Four to three. Mitchell will come in and pitch. I'm assuming that Holland will go out to the outfield to right. And that Bircher will move to center. That's usually the M.O. here. For Greenwood. Let's take a quick break as Austin Mitchell gets ready to take over here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Quick break on the Sports Hog 103.5. 30 seconds. We welcome you back to Pittsfield here at McLean Park in Mountain Home. Greenwood and Mountain Home hooked up in a 5A West battle. Game two of this doubleheader, Bulldogs lost 7-3 to three in game one. And an upset, if you will. The Bulldogs are up on top of the conference. And the Bombers got one at home on them. We're in the nightcap now. The Bulldogs have scratched around here and got the lead. In the top of the six, they lead four to three. But Mountain Homes got some traffic out there on the base paths with a single and a walk. 
and that chased Mason Moore, the starter. And this is Drew Haney, who was their starting pitcher. The left-hander stands in. He's grounded out to first base twice. Let's see what Mitchell's got in the tank. Inside for ball one. Mitchell's last outing looked good. Throw, threw a lot of strikes, commanded all of his pitches. I think he went about four or five innings. One ball count to Haney. Back of the box, up on the dish a little bit. Fouls that one off of Holt. And strike one. Man, I guess Ty told him he was all right. Yeah, umpire was going to kind of delay and make sure. One and one now. Runners at first and second for Mountain Home. Down by one here, bottom six. Wow. Two and one. Mercy. That's a good pitch. Wow. It's just funny, down, you know, four to three on the road, and then the strike zone changes a little bit. It's weird. Just bragging on the guy. <laughs> right. Here's the two one. And Mitchell brings it in there and almost plunked him. Haney could have wore that one, but it was coming in with a little velocity. Three and one now. Runners at first and second. See if Mitchell can bring a strike or load him up. He's going to take here. Well, nope. he swung away, Keith. I thought he would be taken as well. Yeah. That ball was inside. Full count now. Maybe the, left, the tables have turned a little bit in Mitchell's favor. He's been banging the inside of the zone of this lefty. Let's see if he can get one here. Your double play ball would be nice. Time call by... The batter granted by home plate blue. We're ready again. Mitchell up on top. Here's a 3 2 to Haney. Foul straight back into the netting. This is going to be how much Adams has confidence in his off speed. A backdoor breaking ball here after he's fouled off two fastballs, I think, would get a swing and miss or just a freeze him. But, you know, Adams has got to feel good about it that he can throw it for a strike because you don't want to walk him. With one out. Haney steps back in. Mitchell checks the runner at second for Greenwood. Here's the 3 2. And it's low. And he walked him. Base is loaded. For Finley Chafin. He's their eight hole batter, struck out and flat out. He's 0 for 2. Infield flying effect. It is. This is huge for both teams here. Mitchell from the stretch comes set. Base is loaded for Mountain Home. There it is. Outside. Holt's got to be a little bit of a wall back there. Pettigrew's got to move in front of him. He's got to go. Yeah, there he goes. He starts moving in. Because he's got to go four. Him and the corners are going four. One ball count. Just missed outside. Two and oh. No place to put him. Brewer's going to come in and have a talk with Mitchell right here. You got your senior on the mound. It's a big conference game. You just got to calm him down. He gets too wound up, and you got to tell him to breathe a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's like he's pitching to not have contact, like he doesn't want him to hit it. Right. Yeah, and sometimes you just got to let him hit it, get it in play. And remind them who they are because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's still – they hadn't before this today. They hadn't scored in twenty six innings. Mm -hmm. So just remind him. Look, the odds are in your favor if you throw it over the plate right now. Now that's in conference play. We'll we'll footnote your twenty six innings scoreless. Yes, game. yes, in conference play. Yeah. They've certainly put ten runs across on us combined. For sure, they have. <laughs> well, here we go. The meeting's over. Mitchell's still in there. Base is loaded. Two ball count. Everybody's set. Mitchell's on top from the stretch. Chafin digs in the fake dirt on the right side of the right-handed batter's box. Over below. Ball three. Got to come with a striker. We're tied up here in the bottom of the sixth. No place to put this Finley guy. Right. Called strike. Top of the letters. <laughs> Three balls, one strike. 
Here it comes from Mitchell. Way outside, and he walked in the game-tying run. Everybody's moving up three walks in a row. You know, and, that and runs charged to more. You've kind of got it in his hands. I mean, it's this is your senior. You, you've already thrown Taylor. You know, unless you – and you don't want to come back with Carnes. You know, I mean, just – I know he's probably got some pitches left in him, but you don't want to do that. Called strike to Carter Atkins. He's their nine-hole batter. We're still just one out here in the bottom of the sixth. Still loaded and tie game. Mitchell. Double play ball, actually not really a, a slow grounder. Cole could only go to first. Makes the play, but the run scores. That's just a almost a swing and bunt, Keith. It is. Off the handle again. It was a full swing. It just the ball didn't go anywhere. Cole's only play was to first base. Yep. So, second and third now with two outs. And the lead back in favor of Mountain Home. That means Greenwood's got to get one across in the top of the seventh, at least right now. Two down, top of the order for Brady Lance. And look to ball one. Mitchell. Up on top, brings it home. That's in there for a called strike. Mm. One and one. To their left fielder, Lance in there as Hannaford was tossed in the first inning. Swing and a miss. But you know, the entire conference right now is looking at the scoreboard <laughs> and they're thinking, what is going on in Mountain Home, Arkansas? I don't know if this is as crazy as Alma beating Van Buren last week, but it's pretty crazy. It is. You know, those two are what they are. They're, they're both middle. They're in the middle. I mean, to me, Greenwood, Russellville, Greenbrier, that's your three top ones, and everybody else can fight for fourth. And, True. And now you, you come here and you let the team that's – there you go, strike three. Backwards K as Brady Lance watched it go by. Well, the Bombers did some damage, though. Mm. On one hit, they scored two runs. They did leave two on base. They've left five, and they've got the lead back. Bulldogs' last chance as we move to the seventh inning. Let's take a quick break on Greenwood Sports Center and the Sports Hog 103.5. Thirty seconds. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Ball goes through his glove. Oh God! We're back. In Mountain Home. Mm. Got some meat left on that bone. Got down one run in the last inning. Got down to the last three outs. Five to four. Bombers got two across in the bottom of the sixth. Greenwood will need late inning heroics. And this Maddox Carney's back in for Mountain Home to try to close this thing out. Bulldogs kind of got to him a bit. Meat of the order. Carnes, Pettigrew, and Cole. Bulldogs. Last chance to avoid the sweep. They've got to get at least one on the board. Let's see what Grant Carnes can do. Well, you got to like you got your fastest guy, good base runner. He's been putting the ball in play. Just be patient. Get on base here. You got another bullpen. Then you got your hottest hitter up behind him. I like our chances to, to get one this inning. I do too, at least. Brewer takes over the box out there at third base. He's ready. Home plate blue, some final adjustments, puts the mask on. Here we go. This is it, top of the seventh. Bulldog has got to get one run to at least keep this game going. And Carney kicks and fires to Carnes, and it's inside for ball one. A little leaf is pitch. Yep. That ball's close. I don't know if it's a knuckleball or what, but this thing is slow. One ball to Carnes. There's a shot to second base, backhand, throw across, one down. I just hit it too hard. Yep. Pretty good backhand there on the turf infield. And here's Pettigrew now. Pettigrew struck out twice on an RBI double in that fifth inning. That scored Carnes. Carnes was two for three before that, ground out. 
Well, here we go. Two, only two outs left for the Bulldogs. Trailing five to four here, top of the seven. And Carney comes home with it. Pettigrew <laughs> looks at one right down the middle. Ooh. <laughs> Find the one you want, drive it. Hopefully he'll get another one that looks like that. Here's the 0-1. Set up way outside, did Westcoat. Breaking ball, fooled him. Pettigrew swings and misses. Woo. I think that was going to be a strike too, Keith. It was. Mm -hmm. Just takes one here. Let's see if Brady can find it for the Greenwood. Way outside this time, and it's way outside is the pitch. One and two. And to me, that's a waste pitch. You, you got to work with your guys there because now it did absolutely nothing. Here's the one, two to Pettigrew. And fouls this one or hits it in the air. Is it going to get down? It does, and it's a foul ball. Great effort over there from Corp in right field who dove in foul territory, tried to make a great catch, and it would have been a spectacular play over there. Pettigrew's got a little bit new life, though, as that ball falls harmlessly to the Bermuda grass in the actual outfield. How close was it to being fair? I think about three or four feet. Gotcha. It was not that close. So, one ball, two strike count to Pettigrew. With one out here in the top of the seventh, last at bat for the Bulldogs. Unless they can get a run across. And then I guess it still may be. And this one's fouled straight back over the top. Well, he's just filling up the strike zone with little BBs. And Pettigrew just hanging in there. Just a slow breaking ball. Here comes the one two from Carney. And Carnes has to fight that one off. A little bit close one too. That was good. I mean, he swung at a couple pitches. He's put good bats on him. He's just, if the pitcher makes a mistake and leaves one over the plate, I like Petty's chances. Yes. One out. Top of the seventh. Here comes the one two. And this one's fouled back over the top. He's doing a great job of fouling off them little powder puffs. Will he come back with something with some speed on it? Petty might put it in the parking lot. One out here in the top of the seventh. Five to four. Bombers lead. Looking for a sweep of these Bulldogs who were atop the conference to start the day today. Here's the one-two. Breaking ball foul back out of play. What a fantastic at-bat. The pitcher's missing his spots. The catcher wants it even further outside than what he's getting. <laughs> right. And they're close. I mean, they're close. They're probably all strikes, and he's just waiting for his one pitch. They set up way out there again and way outside. God, the, their fans are going crazy, but they don't understand that he was set up over in our dugout. <laughs> that was the ninth pitch of the at-bat. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Pettigrew hits this one in the air to center. Center fielder comes in, finds it. And makes the catch for out number two. Ten pitch at bat. Mountain home won it. Here's Jackson Cole. He is the last chance for the Bulldogs. He has reached on an error. He singled in the second, scored a run. Also lined out to the second baseman. One for three. Two outs. Top of the seventh. Down by one. Can Cole keep us alive? First pitch swing us to right field. Right fielder's drawing the bead, makes the catch. And that's going to do it. The Bombers sweep the Bulldogs here on their home field and get a crucial conference victory sweep to move to 6-4 and four in conference play. Greenwood will drop to 7-3 and three now. And a shakeup here in the 5A West as the Bombers come up here and get a rather unlikely sweep, just to be quite honest with you, here in conference play. Mm, if you polled one. everybody but Mountain Home, you you probably would have put worst case scenario. Someone say they split, yeah. But to get swept, you know, it's it's official moving day. You know, people are going to be moving up, people will be moving down, and again, you know, Gr Greenwood's won conference championships. They they need to just regroup, go out, win out, and then carry that momentum into the state tournament. That's that's what needs to happen. Holland was one for three with an RBI. Uh, Mitchie was one for two, scored two runs, had a walk here in game two. Cole had a single and scored a run. He was one for four. Pettigrew with a double and an RBI. He was one for three, or one for four, rather, on the day. 
On the second game, rather, Carnes had a couple of hits, reached on a fielder's choice and a ground out, two for four, scored a run. Well, and Skaggs had an RBI single as well. He was one for four. Well, tough one, Keith. Long trip home. Yeah, well, it's going to be even longer now. <laughs> you know, now you got to think about it. Um, and again, all, all you can do is you can't dwell on it. No. You got be it's over. You got to figure out how that happened and then fix it. Don't let it happen again. You know whether it's guys that didn't compete or guys that you thought would do better. You got to figure out why. Right. And you know this is there's really for me if it's conference game, you shouldn't have to get guys up for uh, for conference games. I mean, they should want, especially coming to Mountain Home, knowing that you should win, you should still have that same fire. And we just didn't have that fire tonight as a team. It just did. You, did you feel it? I didn't feel it I didn't anywhere. Feel it either. I didn't feel it either, for sure. Well, we'll call it a night here from Mountain Home as the Bombers win Game One seven to three and sweep the Bulldogs five to four here in the nightcap. Things get interesting, and never a dull moment in the five A West. We will take a look at our schedule, Keith, and tell you that our next live stream radio broadcast will be at home as the no Vilcoms on, on the road. No, it's at home. Alma will be next Tuesday yes. on the twenty third. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Our next conference broadcast. So look forward to seeing you as the spinach uh, folks come over to Greenwood. It'll be our next conference battle in. The Bulldogs hopefully get back on the winning ways in conference play. You say Bentonville's our next game, right? Thursday. I believe they play Bentonville at home Thursday. Yeah. So come out and watch the boys. And keep check the uh, Greenwood website. They'll have the schedules out there for boys and softball as well. Sweep tonight from uh, by the Bombers, and the Bulldogs will head home and regroup. I want to thank Sean Holland and Joy Buffkin for bringing us the pictures on the live stream. Thank you to Crosswalk Media. I want to thank uh, Mr. Bill and Mr. Michael Ferris back at the station for making it sound so good. And my man, Keith Holt, appreciate it, brother. Thank you Enjoy it as always. for the broadcast helping me out there. Yeah. You've been uh, watching on YouTube at Greenwood Sports Center and listening live on your home for local sports in the western Arkansas Fox Sports Radio, the Sports Hog, 103.5.